Anahush and Beth, who put on quite a display last time. Uh, we got to watch him underneath the bright lights, winning that tournament in fantastic and, uh, dare I say, somewhat dominant fashion because he played some beautiful magic that weekend. We'll see if he can do that again here this week. And off to a great start here, Ailey, as is Matt Nass, both these players checking in at 1-0. and But as you mentioned, a matchup that we expect to see a lot of here in Just Guy Turns versus, versus Is It Phoenix. And more importantly, I think, we're going to find out over the course of this tournament who is favored here because I think that both sides believe that they're good in this matchup. So this is very interesting to me. It is indeed. We've had a few uh, disagreements, at least from the commentator's side of things, saying, I think this deck is best. And then we kind of go, <laughs> you're wrong. This deck is best. There's always that uh, nice little bit of back and forth deciding which deck is best. So I'm also very keen to see who comes out on top here. As both players get things underway, just getting their lands down. We're going to fire for Brainstorm here for Hushenbeth. Let's take a look at the top of the library. All right, so... Blue. Looting Phoenix, Pillar of Flame drawn. Pillar of Flame, not at its best in this matchup, but remember this is a Brainstorm, not a Faithless Looting, so card's gonna go back on top, and then we might see a Looting here in just a moment to get Phoenix and a mystery card into the graveyard. Matt Nass's hand, not the most, uh, not the strongest hand I think we've ever seen in Magic. Just a couple copies of Prismari Command and a Memory Lapse, but also not the worst place to be either, so we might see a Prismari Command here on a Hushinbeth end step, perhaps. Yeah, no interactive spells here from Hushinbeth just yet. So for the most part, both players just trying to execute their game plan as best they can. And then we'll see plenty of counter spells brought in after the sideboard. But expressive iteration here is going to be the play for Arna. Let's see what's on top of the library and play a land off of it if we can. There's a Fabled Passage as well as the two key cards from the Mystical Archives in Faithless Looting and Brainstorm. Expressive iteration, a card that many have been excited to cast over the past handful of months, a huge inclusion into Strixhaven, a card that we're gonna see a lot over the course of the next handful of months, and dare I say years in competitive magic. So if you uh, if you like drawing cards, which I don't, <laughs> then this is the card for you. <laughs> I like to earn my eight victories the, uh, the honest way. Yeah, the good old fashioned, I'm gonna beat you down way, right? Draw the right card every turn, how about that? <laughs> Never unlucky. This is a pretty scary uh, time here, though, for Arna Hushenbeth, because if Matt Nass had found an Indomitable Creativity, this could have been game over here. Does get the Dwarven Mind creature down, though, and there's some interaction for Hushenbeth, able to kill that creature, but there is a memory lapse that will protect the creature from dying. And this is a point that I'm going to kind of hammer home during the historic portion of our tournament, especially when Izzet Phoenix is involved, which... It's going to be involved a lot here this week, and so people are going to get tired of me pretty quickly. Sorry, partner. <laughs> uh, it's about, and it's going to continue to be about, pressure plus reactive disruption, and in some instances, proactive uh, disruption. And what I mean by that, again, is when Is It Phoenix is at its best, it is attacking with Phoenix and Stormy Entities, and perhaps uh, other, other additional two-mana creatures like a Sprite Dragon. Uh, and then it has its Counter Magic, or then it has its timely Lava Coil or Pillar of Flame to kill a creature and just keep right on attacking, while still keeping your opponent off balance. It's the setup turns in which Is It Phoenix might be at a little bit of a disadvantage because right now, Nass is underneath any pressure, so he's just kind of floating around, not worried about too much at this point. But part of the power of Is It Phoenix is that that can all change pretty darn quickly. <laughs> Faith is looting, taking a look at even more cards off the top of Hushenbeth's library. Gonna discard two, but we'll be able to get the Phoenix flying as uh, Matt Nass has no response to what he's up to. So Matt Nass quite happy to just let this happen. Likely to see a Prismari command on the end step to try and dig further to find the key cards in this nonsense combo. But it looks like we're gonna go for the Prismari command right now to take care of this Arclight Phoenix and send it back from whence it came. Yeah, we might see that this turn. We might see command deal two damage to Phoenix and draw two discard two. Could be a treasure option here as well here for Nass, and that might actually be the more interesting of the two, which is Prismari Command deal to make a treasure, because in the next turn, that gives you four mana plus mm -hmm. a second treasure. Then you can play Fabled Passage. That'll give you your, your seventh mana to play the big dragon and oh, yeah. then kind of mosey along that way. Art casting dragon seems good. So it's going to draw two, discard two. Go. Okay. Physics Mastery, Time Warp. This is looking pretty good here for Matt Nass, and all Arna can do is look on... All right, so we're going to make the treasure token as well. 
interesting decision here as to what's going to end up in the bin. It looks like a big dragon might be going west. Yeah, this is curious. Now, one thing to note as the dragon does head over to the graveyard and Mystic's Mastery is going to hang out in the grip is don't forget about the lightning axe that's hanging out in Hushinbeth Sand. He has a, a bevy of red spells that he has access to. Uh, some he can cast on Nasus' turn, some he can't. But Lightning Axe is quite good against specifically Velomachus Lorehold. Mm -hmm. So, Nas putting that in the graveyard, pretty sharp play. And now we're going to see a Time Warp be cast here. So, curious to see where Nas is going to go next. Well, let's see what's on top of the library. It's a fabled passage, unfortunately, but we do have the Brainstorm as well as the Fetch Land to be able to put back and shuffle away the worst cards drawn here off Brainstorm. Yeah, we call that a perfect brainstorm in the business, and this is pretty darn close. So two cards are going to have to go back, and you mentioned the Fabled Passage's ability to shuffle all of those cards away uh, and make it so the draw steps are pretty clean. I think a pretty easy uh, put back there because you're going to want to keep the additional copy of Brainstorm. Now, does Nas actually want to sack and cast Brainstorm again right now, or does he just want to sit pretty? It looks like he's answered half of my question, which is he's going to sacrifice this Fabled Passage right now. So in terms of what Matt Nass is digging for, what is the number one card on his wish list? It's a good question, actually. I, I'm not entirely sure. I don't think Magma Opus is a bad place to be. Uh, and if we... Okay, so we actually do... This is kind of cute. We can we can actually <laughs> cash in the Opus for a treasure right now, I believe, and then mastery it if we wanted to? Yeah. If not, why not? It's a little, it's a little aggro, because you could also just make the argument of, I'll just cast Magma Opus. You don't really That's have much true. counter magic in your deck, and I'm at 15, <laughs> so I'm not in much of a rush here. So Matt Nass being a lot more patient than I think uh, either Cedric or I are <laughs> in terms of playing this deck is just like, yes, let's do all the dumb things in a row that we possibly can. And there is, of course, the potential for Matt Nass to do that. But, of course, Matt Nass proving why he is one of the best players when it comes to these kinds of decks, passes the turn back and is just going to bide his time. Well, talking with a lot of players leading into this tournament, there's been a lot of conversation lately around Mizzix's Mastery and how powerful this card is and everything that it does enable. Uh, Mani, who I'm sure in the news desk will talk about that at length uh, with everybody there <laughs> uh, because he's been singing the praises of that card and with good reason because it's not just the four mana mode on that card that's so darn good. Uh, Nass, I believe, is setting up for the overload mode on mm. that card. And... When you're playing against Is It Phoenix, it's a deck that doesn't have very much counter magic at all in the main deck. Mm -mm. And Arne has all of these cards. A lot of them are red, not blue. And the blue one is a creature, not a counter spell. So uh, <laughs> we might be overloading a Mystic's Mastery here in a moment. You can overkill, go for it. That's what I love to see a storming entity enters the battlefield. We're gonna scry a couple of cards here for Arne. Let's see what's on top of the library. Sprite Dragon and Opt. Does he want either of these cards right now? And, you know, our, our players here, unsurprisingly, are providing us with some very, very, very good gameplay. Not so much the skill level, which is assumed. But we're here for the big plays. We got to see Dragonstorm mm -hmm. resolve last round, the infinite combo. Uh, the folks in the Twitch chat, I know, I mean, we got Overload and Caps over there. People want to see the Overload on <laughs> Mizzix Mastery, so we got to give the people what they want. Yeah. Come on, put on a good show here for our audience. As uh, we are going to see Magna Opus discarded, make a treasure, and Mizzix Mastery, it is time let me tell to you, overload. Let, let me tell you how bad that feels. When your opponent <laughs> ends up discards Mizzix Mastery and they have enough mana to cast it. Cool, I'm dead. That's yeah, cool. Yeah, that, that's about the feeling you get there. We're going to take an extra turn. We're going to chuck out another... A magna opus here. Oh, gross. It's so gross. Please let it happen, Arna. Come on, for the people. Just just let magic happen. You gotta stick it out. Let's kick it off with a brainstorm. <laughs> How about one of these? How about a little of that? Yeah, some of this, some of that. Maybe a bit of a sprinkling of this. We're gonna do some time warping, some brainstorming. Seems good. Yeah, this is this is this is fine. I've seen worse turns. <laughs> I will say that. Oh, goodness me. Now, I think the most complicated thing about an overloaded mastery is how the heck do I order my spells? Well, if my in, opponent doesn't scoop. In most circumstances, I would agree with you, but we are talking about combo master, big brain Matt Nass. So this is easy <laughs> mode for him. He's been doing this his entire life. 
be it sequencing mana elves uh, when he won the Grand Prix in Oakland at the early stages of the last decade, or with all the work that he did with Ironworks to help that card get removed from modern. <laughs> sequencing combo decks, that's like breathing to Matt Nass. This is easy mode. Goodness. All right, so here we go. Let's resolve some spells. Magna Opus going to tap those lands, going to ping one point of damage to the Stormwing Entity, and oh my goodness, just look at all these triggers going off here. Arna is probably... Uh, yeah, he's, he's in a lot of trouble at this point, but he's not giving up just yet. As uh, we're going to go through all these spells on the stack here from Matt Nass. Let's do some damage to face. Let's draw some cards. There's another Mizzix Mastery, so we can recast a bunch of spells if we can get some in the bin here. There's another Time Warp. Hey, let's do the Time Warp again, because why not, right? That's what we're going to do. Respect to Arne for playing this out. It's just <laughs> so much respect. Oh, my goodness me. Oh, and there's an Indomitable Creativity, so we can get some Velomarchus out. There's no threat of a, a Lightning Axe at this point. Excuse me, not Lava Axe. I, I like all varieties of axes. Oh, goodness, another one. There's a Memory Lapse, too. Good grief. Would this count as playing with your food? I mean, kind of. Kind of. But sometimes that's fun, right? <laughs> it's not like the worst thing. One more time with feeling. Let's go. We can yeah. also just cast Mystic's Mastery again and take another turn. And this 4-4 on the battlefield is going to get things done here for Matt Ness. Oh, Arna, I'm so sorry. But thank you for letting this play out so we can see just exactly how gross this deck is. Let's do another turn. Why don't we? Matt Ness is quite happy. And oh, now we can see? Had enough. Now we give up? <laughs> it was the third. It was the fourth time warp where he's like, you know what? That's enough oh. for me. All right. All right. Oh, goodness me. Respect, I respect him regardless. Big, I'm a big Arna fan. <laughs> oh, so. say me too. So in the last championship, he certainly went to farming. This time he's uh, hoping to rely on the flying of the Izzet Phoenix to get through this championship. But currently, Matt Nass is making that a little bit tricky for him. What do we do in the sideboard? Well, in, in these Steam Vents based mirrors, you're just going to see a lot of players bringing in counter magic, um, especially in a phoenix versus non-phoenix steam vents based mirror players are going to be kind of moving back and forth with the counter magic narset's going to be a pretty big card uh, for both players if they have access to it taking a look at matt's sideboard wouldn't be surprised to see shark typhoon come in wouldn't be surprised to see commence the end game some number of mystical disputes i'm not sure how many matt's going to want after sideboard because the text on that card is pretty relevant but you know it doesn't kind of card like faithless looting doesn't do a nice job of stopping uh arc light phoenix as an example but i think it's relevant enough that you're going to want it um Curious if he's going to want access to search for his content. It's a really, really nice one of. So we're going to have to see about that as well. For Arna's sideboard, uh, very varied with a lot of twos and ones, as you can see. Um, and so it doesn't look like he's going to get away from like any of the creatures, per se, because he doesn't really have that many of them, though he does have more than Hain. Um, but, you know, mystical disputes on his end, those seem of interest. You could certainly make an argument for Fry and the way that it interacts with Velimachus. Uh, so th the thing that's interesting about these Steam Vents mirrors is... There's so many different ways you can go in sideboarding, play draw dependent, um, what you think your opponent's going to sideboard in, what you don't think your opponent's going to sideboard in. There's no, in my opinion here, Ailey, hard and fast rule to go about doing it. One thing I will say, though, that having uncounterable spells in these matchups, pretty darn good indeed. So that fry, I hope, will be frying some big old dragons on uh, Matt Nass's side of the battlefield, because I don't know about you, Cedric, but I'm always happy when we get three games out of these players. Uh, yeah, I mean, I want three games out of every single match that we watch here because I love watching <laughs> great players play Magic, so that's an easy ask for me. Um, so, yeah, if we can just get three games all day, cool with me. Trust me. <laughs> all right, let's get game two underway. Here it is, Matt Nass versus Arna Huchimbet. Matt Nass is up one game after taking... I didn't count how many turns that was in a row. Four or five? I believe four could have been more. Could, could have been, been easily could have been more. more. Yeah, because Arna wasn't dead there. Yeah, we could have had one more turn. Alas. Alas. Let's take hands here. Let's keep that. And uh, start things off here with a steam vent for Hooch and Bats. And Velomarkus Lorehold, you're supposed to stay in the library, dear dragon. All right, so we got a little clock going here. Not going to last too long. Stand a fry over there in hand. So damage. We'll see how much life uh, 
Matt Nass is willing to lose. Looks like this question might get answered for me pretty quickly here uh, with a fry maybe being cast right away here. One thing I do want to note, though, as Matt continues to take his second turn of the game here, Ailey, is it Phoenix in this tournament, 88 copies, 35.2% of the metagame. <laughs> it's makes insane. A, makes a lot of sense from a power level perspective because this is arguably the best Brainstorm and Faithless Looting deck, and those two cards are arguably the most powerful cards in this particular tournament. However, what's going to be interesting to watch unfold over the course of these three days is how good is this deck really? Because this is the ultimate stress test, this style of tournament with this level of player, of how actually good is, is it Phoenix? Is it truly the best deck in this format? Because when the Mystical Archive came, people expected it to be the best deck, uh, but our old friend Tainted Pact had something to say about that. <laughs> so this is going to be a great stress test for these players and historic fans alike to see, is this deck the real deal? Because people are definitely gunning for it, like Matt Nass is here this weekend. Oh, yes, indeed. There we see a removal storming entity at X. Here. And that is going to cause some troubles for Matt Nass as he tries to get brainstorms resolved. Huge, huge card here because you use that fry and you take care of that sprite dragon. And that's one less fry to take care of that planeswalker. Passing the turn back, no fourth land there for Matt Nass. Expressive iteration is going to be the play here for Arna. Gets to take a look at a couple of cards, put one back in the library, and exile one to play on this turn. Ideally looking to find a land. Ooh, finds two lands and a Soul Guide Lantern. Well, Lantern, of course, a, 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 it's not... Well, I don't know how I want to phrase this, because it's obviously an A-plus against... Uh, it's an A-plus against Is It Phoenix. Yeah. I'd give it a B in this matchup. I mean, Matt does use his graveyard. Mizzix Master is a real thing, and, and mm -hmm. we can see how Matt's hand is lining up right now, in which it very easily could be, you know, create a create a treasure with Magma Opus, Mizzix Mastery it back, you know, finish yep. some things off, blah, blah, blah. Uh, that's an aspect <laughs> of this deck that's incredibly powerful and has a reason to play it. Uh, and this Soul Guide Lantern uh, looks pretty attractive at stopping that. However, for now, looks like Arnie's just going to hold up a negate to defend himself around this. Uh, and that uh, that should be pretty darn good. Yeah. So holding off on playing that Soul Guide Lantern, expecting something silly to happen here once Matt Nass finds his fourth land. And uh, indeed, Mizzix Mastery is going to target the Magna Opus, but that negate being held up by Arna Hushenbeth is going to say, nope, no silly things for you this turn, my friend. How terrifying would it be if there was <laughs> mystical dispute in hand here for Matt Nass? It'd be absolutely horrible news there for Arne, but fortunately oh it's, all, it's all good news right now is that negate's going to resolve. Yeah, we, one thing you just can't do in, the, in this format, as Brainstorm looks like it's going to resolve here for Arne, so three cards coming, two will go back. But in, in this format, Narset is, it's so powerful when you're in a Steam Vents based format. But the other thing that's really interesting about it too is that it is a little bit difficult to resolve because it is three mana that you have to tap on your own turn in a format where mystical dispute is going to be ubiquitous. So as powerful as a card as powerful of a card as it is, Ailey, there is definitely some cost to it and some risk to trying to resolve it. There is a that. As things are looking pretty good here for Arna now, able to dig through several cards courtesy of Narset and Expressive Iteration. Finds an Arclight Phoenix, finds a Faithless Looting, would be able to get this Phoenix on the board and start delivering the beatdown. But then what? Keeping up that Fry will be super duper helpful if there is a Mizzix Mastery. I'm curious yeah. to see how he plays this out here. Yeah, and if you don't have a Counterspell to go to, you can make the argument of just getting a Soul Guide Lantern on the battlefield. So you, you can go a couple different ways here. If you want to leave up, do you want to leave up Fry or do you want to leave up Soul Guide Lantern? It looks like the answer Oof. is I want to leave up. I want to leave up Fry. Eh, losing a Phoenix here kind of stinks, but it's not the end of the world when you have this many cantrips <laughs> to kind of rebuild. That's the second top deck storm of uh, Anger of the Gods there for uh, Matt Ness. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and it's interesting, though, because Arne, you know, no, no real panic there. I, I think it's just kind of a, eh, that's inconvenient. Yeah. It's a little bit annoying, but, you know, I got two brainstorms and an op. I, I'll probably find something else to do. Now, it's really interesting to see how this deck plays out as opposed to Alexander Haynes' list, where we weren't running copies of the Sprite Dragons. And I think this card is actually pretty damn good. I like it more than the Crackling Drake. 
because it's just this irritating little thing that you really, really don't want to counter or kill. But if you let it go unchecked, you're in big, big trouble. Yeah, and this is kind of an interesting, it's kind of an interesting question here on what's the appropriate tertiary threat for this deck? Because you're going to play four Phoenix. I mean, it's, yeah. it's in the name. So you're going to play four <laughs> Phoenix. And then you're going to play some number of Stormwing Entity, almost certainly, because that card's incredibly powerful. But then do you want to play Sprite Dragon? Do you want to play Dreadheart Arcanist? Do you want to play something bigger like Crackling Drake? You have a lot of options at your disposal. For Hain, he said, I only need seven threats. I got Phoenixes. I got three Stormwing Entities. Good enough for me. Uh, for Arne and for a lot of players, they're saying, I want access to Sprite Dragon as well because it does kill pretty quickly, as you mm -hmm. mentioned. So we're seeing quite a few of those here this weekend. Yeah, and having a hasty threat against Planeswalkers, which would otherwise shut down this archetype. You know, if there's a Narset on the other side of the battlefield, then these Sprite Dragons can take her out super quickly. So we're about to see a second one here hit the battlefield, and Matt Ness is looking in dire straits here, struggling to get lands out on the battlefield and not having much to do with those two brainstorms effectively shut off, courtesy of Narset. I'm trying to see if it's possible for Arne to win this turn. He'd have to get pretty hyper-aggressive with it, um, which I don't think is entirely necessary. Um, you know, could he chain together enough spells and then maybe runs himself into an, a copy of Aether Dust and that sets him back a little bit. I, I think more importantly, uh, as you're going to see the attack here for five, is are we going to be able to defend that Narset? Because the Narset being on the battlefield is colding the brainstorms, as we know. But if the uh, if the Narset gets kind of knocked off by this little one-one knucklehead, mm -hmm. then Matt Nass's hand is kind of turned back on. So. Oh yeah. So curious to see what Matt Nass is going to do here. If we're going to see a, a uh, Ether Gust sending away the bigger of the two Sprite Dragons, Mystical Dispute would take care of the spell. So no, thank you. We're just going to get some big old chunky pigeons swinging on in for nine points of damage, and now all of a sudden Matt Nass is down to. Five. All right. Well, doors open. Nass doesn't know it, but Nass, you know, Nass also doesn't really have a choice. I guess. I guess we could just Velimachus. That's it. Yeah. Okay. So Ooh. if he goes, to, if he goes to Velimachus, he's gonna get fried right out of the building. And so that's that's bad news there for Matt, for Nass. <laughs> and so this game, this game ends that way. Well, we get our wish. We're going to game three here. A very impressive performance there from the Is It Phoenix deck in the hands of Arna Hushambeth. Matt Nass stumbling on the land draws. Oh, unfortunately, unable to keep up there with uh, Arne Hushenbeth, so let's see what he does in game three. Pretty happy with his deck configuration, just submit straight away. Well, fair enough. Um, Nass, you have to imagine, and I'll say this for Arne too, you have to imagine they've both played this matchup a ton, um, getting ready for this event, so much on the line, of course, in these championship level events, kind of coming into this event, you know that these are gonna be two of the most played decks. Not really sure, kind of maybe leading into the event, how much you expect to see this Jeskai turns deck, but for the uh, for the Is It Phoenix deck, you knew it was going to be a major player. Notable here that given the players that Matt Nass does test with, that they elected to go this route as opposed to going the Is It Phoenix route, and we work ourselves into a third game, which I think is going to be pretty common in this matchup. There is a lot of back and forth between these two decks and certainly these two players that I think more often than not, this matchup's going to go three games. I love to see it. I love good magic, and I love fast magic too, which both of these decks are able to deliver. And one thing I will say about these lists is just the fact that the players had roughly a week from the launch of Historic Anthology 5 to land on their deck lists that so many people decided that Arclight Phoenix was definitely the deck to bring for this championship. Yeah, uh, it, look, it, it's straightforward enough in the deck building, right? You can probably, when you're building this deck, you could probably lock in, this is a conservative estimate, 40 cards, mm -hmm. right? Brainstorm 4, Looting 4, Phoenix 4, Storming Entity three or four steam vents, a hundred, you know, you can, <laughs> you can, you can lock in a That's decent illegal. number of it. Yeah. Well, <laughs> um, and, and then, you know, you just, you just kind of try to figure out the, the last, uh, the last 20 in your main deck and some sideboard cards, you know, it's going to be three or four mystical disputes to your main deck, uh, and sideboards. So, you know, it, it's an easy place to start, especially when you're in a time crunch, which for what they it's were. worth, all players were under. Mm -hmm. So it, it makes some sense why we saw players gravitate this way. Yeah, it's kind of like what you see happen at the beginning of a new set release. Everyone kind of gravitates towards the most aggressive, most powerful deck that can get the game won and done, you know? Yeah, it, and it, then, it makes sense. And then it kind of like works its way out, figure out the, the counter to that deck, and then the counter to the next deck, and it works its way through like that. So it's cool to see this list uh, getting the love that I think it deserves. Little Dagron coming on in. 
Little Dagron. Sprite Dragon, yes, indeed. I apologize in advance. Uh, I call anything that flies a pigeon. Yes, I am aware it is a dragon. Uh, it's an adorable dragon at that. Dragon Pigeon. Yes. For creature types now. Yes. It's been changed for one weekend only. <laughs> so, last game, we saw Matt be extremely aggressive with Zinger of the Gods. Mm -hmm. and, and aggressive with his fry. Remember, there was that turn yeah. last game on turn two where Oof. Sprite Dragon, okay, that's dead right now, fry it. And so are we going to see him be really aggressive with this Anger of the Gods this turn? It looks like the answer is no. So Sprite Dragon does have the opportunity, depending on what Arne is potentially able to find with this Brainstorm, turning into a 4-4 and being out of Anger of the Gods range. Lightning Axe off the top there. Brainstorm available to Arne. We're going to kick things off with that. And the little sprite dragon, that could, is going to get nice and chunky. Now, no fable passes to work with here, and no uh, no faithless looting to clear the top of the deck. So two cards are going to have to come back, and that means that those two cards are going to be involved in Arne's next draw step and next brainstorm. Uh, all things to be cognizant of. If you're Arne, you know you're playing against someone who does have Anger of the Gods in their deck, uh, some number of copies of that card after sideboard. So... Playing a Stormwing Entity now onto this battlefield is almost assuredly not going to happen unless you just <laughs> think that Matt doesn't have Anger of the Gods and you want to get hyper-aggressive. So resolving this Brainstorm is really going to set the pathway for the next couple of turns and really going to set the pathway, Ailey, for what this game is going to look like because what he's doing right now as the rope has welcomed itself into this game is really setting up what the next three or four turns are going to look like for him and how this game is going to be played. Yeah, so the big consideration here for Arne is what is happening on turn four. You saw him take a look at the graveyard there. There's no immediate threat of anything too ridiculous, courtesy of Mizzix Mastery. So I'm quite keen on him just passing here and keeping up that negate or the fry if needs be. But gosh, it's so tempting when that storming entity is that cheap. Well, one of the things that's nice about this storming entity is that you can bottom both of these cards and clear it away. Now, it's very easy for us to say, why would he play a Stormwing Entity? Matt has Anger of the Gods. Because <laughs> what if Matt doesn't have Anger of the Gods? Arne gets to untap mm -hmm. and do his thing. Life is really, really good. Now, for Matt, he's going to very quickly, of course, cast this card and leave Mystical Dispute open. So now life is extremely good for Matt Nass and not so good for Arne Hushinbeth. Luckily, though, the second Sprite Dragon is available, but Mystical That's Dispute nice. is going to say, no, thank you. Luckily, though, for Arne, he does have the negate if he wants to fire it off. But yeah. is this worth protecting? I don't think he wants to use negate on this because you're basically trying to save just a 1-1. One, one. Now, yeah, Sprite Dragon slash Pigeon can grow much larger than that. But I don't love it. But I can also rationalize using the negate here because Arne doesn't have another threat. And he needs to have a threat on the battlefield to kind of get this party started. So uh, this might get real ugly here, though, because you got a time warp. Oh, dear. Yeah, I think I think I think it's game, right? So you, you warp, you mastery the warp, then you Velomachus. Oh dear. So we could Arne Hushabeth may not get another turn in this game, nope, folks. Nope, doesn't look like it, because we're just gonna take a billion turns here for Matt Nass, find a Prismar come out of the top of the library, but more importantly, Velomachus lower hold hits the battlefield, swings on in for six points of damage along with a one-one, and what do we find off the top of the library? Don't tease us. Let us see, please. Oh, it's just an express iteration. That's not that exciting. Well, depending on who you're rooting for, it's exciting because Arne <laughs> gets another turn. So this is really good news for the call time uh, set championship winner. Uh, he gets to actually untap and keep playing magic here, which a lot of the times against Velomachus is not the case. So good news here for Arne, though I will say uh, his draw step is going to have to be really darn good because he's in some serious trouble. Is it that Spire Bluff Canal? Not the land you want to find at this point in the game. I'm going to kick things off here with a brainstorm. While we are able to do things, finds a couple lands, Sprite Dragon and an Opt, but more importantly, we do have that Fry in hand, so we'll be able to take care of Elamarchus Lorehold, as he is a white creature too. So let's see, we gotta put two cards back here, and you know, this is a little bit of the trouble with Brainstorm without fetch lands. For the you legacy players out there, you know how good Brainstorm is alongside fetch lands. You've got access to Fabled Passage in this format if you're RNA right now. You're probably going to put back a land and a Sprite Dragon. You cast a Fry, you opt away your trash, and just keep moving on that way. I think that's the best that you can do, which is not, you know, the best clearing of the top of your deck. Um, you could also make an argument here of, you know, put back, basically keep Sprite Dragon and Fry and a land so mm -hmm. that you can just go Sprite Dragon Fry. I hope you don't have much, but, you know, your opponent just 
expressive iteration and also their stuff so that's unlikely to work out in your favor so you're gonna see what we see there which is just a fried play land have an opt attack for three pass the turn back all right so who math is still in this matt nass really needs to draw something awesome off the top of the library here with brainstorm what can he find are we going to see a million more turns? There's a Mizzix Mastery and no response to it from Arne Huchenbeth. So you got to think that he's looking at that and uh, Magnum Opus 2 just for good measure. Oh boy. Yeah, trouble is uh, trouble is brewing here right now for Arne, who, you know, he he got by uh, that fellow Marcus uh, turn, I guess I'll say. And so far as he got to untap and keep playing and <laughs> kill the big dragon. Um, but... The, the fear here was that Matt was going to be able to reload in a meaningful way. And look, if you've never cast a Brainstorm before or watched it in action, you're seeing why it is one of the best Magic cards of all time and why it was such a welcome introduction into the historic format because it has turned this format upside down, folks. It has indeed. I think there were two responses to that card when people saw it in Mystical Archives. Half of the, uh, the player base was like, yes! The other half was like, you mad lads, you did it. Yes, uh, oh, some, goodness people, me. some people perhaps not so pleased. There were also a subset of people who felt it wouldn't be that strong without fetch lands. <laughs> and well, <laughs> I'm going to say that maybe uh, we'll, we'll let history unfold as it as it were. I think it's perfectly fine without fetch lands. <laughs> <laughs> so Matt Nass going for the safer line here, going to ether gust away the Sprite Dragon, leaving Opus and a Mystical Dispute in hand. Yeah, and this, and this is brutal, too, because Arne doesn't have any other threats, so he's going to put that card on top because he doesn't really have much of an option otherwise. And, you know, his, his, his Phoenix deck has kind of run out of gas this game. There's not a Faithless Looting hanging out in the graveyard. It's just a little baby Sprite Dragon, which, sure, you can play, and you can opt away that Spire Bluff Canal, but not a ton going on here right now, unfortunately, for Arne. Yeah, he's going to have to hope something beneath that Spire Bluff Canal is enough to keep him in this game. As Matt Nass can fire off a mystical dispute here and just be like, nope, you're stuck with whatever's on top there, friend. Will he do it? Yeah, I like, I, you yeah. know, a dispute, a dispute is aggressive, but it's also the last card in your opponent's hand. And you know that they've brainstormed two cards back on top of their deck. Mm -hmm. And in a lot of instances like that, those cards that you put back. And probably deduce that his draw step's going to stink. Uh, yep. and we know it's going to stink and. Boy, it's getting ugly out here. Yeah, and on the other side of things, Matt Nass's draw step does not suck at all, as Mizzix Mastery is on top of the library there, deciding whether he wants to go for the Magnum Opus just straight up, or if we're going to send that away and cast it from the graveyard. How close are we to Overload? Uh, we got enough. We got yeah. enough. Do it. Do it. Do it. <laughs> no, no, don't concede! Let it be. Let it be. <laughs> there we go okay so again kind of conservative just going for the magnum opus making a 4-4 unfortunately for arna a spire bluff canal at the top is not going to keep him in this game as matt nass is free and clear to victory here as we're going to get Mes <laughs> six mastery one more time just for the yeah. magnum opus and arna hushenbeth has seen enough congratulations to matt nass i don't know about you cedric but it's looking like Jeskai turns might just be better than Phoenix. <laughs>